you're going to be so glad that you have this DVD to watch because this is one of the most fun segments. We're going to do desserts and we're going to make some really fun things that are so simple and some that are just a little bit more complicated. I really shouldn't say they're complicated. It's, it's just more that they're time consuming, but they're really fun. The kids like to get involved. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even doubt if one of them came cruising in here saying, what are you doing? Because it's really hard to keep these around. It's, it's really, um, I think it's one of the most fun things about raw food and people that don't even like a lot of raw food, regular like vegetable dishes, they love raw food desserts. So where I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make a couple of things, but I'm gonna start with this banana pecan pie with a pecan cream filling. And we're gonna dehydrate it for a little while. And what I'm doing now is I'm making the crust. I'm actually starting to slice the bananas. I'm gonna layer them all around this pie dish. Then we're going to cut some mango, and I'm gonna show you how to cut mango. And we're gonna put a layer of mango and then maybe another layer of bananas. So you wanna cut the bananas kind of thin, but not too thin to where they, they'll get slimy, because if they're, if they're real thin, you know, you can, you can imagine. But if it's too thick, that won't work either. So, and I'll tell you, it's a challenge sometimes to cut bananas all evenly, so just do your best. It's always gonna be good, no matter what it is. But I'm taking them about a quarter of an inch. And then we're just gonna cut these and you can see that we've got a couple of brown spots on the bananas. That's really no big deal. They're just kind of nice and ripe. And they're going to be all the sweeter if they're ripe. And because we're going to put this in the hydrator for a little while, um, it'll, it'll, we're not going to cook it, and we're not going to really dehydrate it. We're not going to dry it out. What we're going to do is kind of give it a little congeal together. And we're going to take these all the way around, and then we'll put the... Um, the uh, mango inside of it. What are you making? Hey, Landon. I had a feeling you'd show up. Desserts? Yeah. Awesome. You want to help? Yes. All right, great. I could use some. Sweet. Um, can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, just layering it with the banana crust. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Here, I'm going to hand it over to you, and then I can show everybody how to make now you might need some more, but you know how to handle these knives, and you know me, I'll just pounce on you if you don't do it right. <laughs> yeah. So just start layering these, and you can overlap them a little bit. See how this one right there is like overlapped? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you can do that, but go ahead and fill it all in first, and then you can take your little pieces and kind of fill in the holes, because it's okay, okay if it's overlapped. And we also want to build it kind of high. Go ahead and see if you can make these stay, and we'll take okay. them all the way around like that. Sounds good. And you know what we might do is we might put the filling in first, and then we'll put the last layer of uh, bananas around the top. Let's do okay. that. Okay, you go ahead, honey. Awesome. Did you wash your hands? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this knife. Now, there's a couple ways of doing mangoes, cutting mangoes. As you can see on this particular mango, excuse me, mm -hmm. they have a little, um, kind of a little lip there, and there's a big seed inside that's about this big around and it's right in the middle and it goes up and down on each side. So the best way to cut a mango, if you don't have to peel it, is to cut it right here on this side and then you turn it around and you cut the other side straight down and then you've got two really nice pieces of mango and I might show you that but we don't want to cut the mango that way today. But when you do that, you've got the skin still on it. You can just carve it like this and just shear it and you fold open the skin I'll have to show you, but anyway, that's, that's kind of how you do it. But we're going we're gonna to take the skin off today because we don't want chunks of mango. We want nice, thin pieces that we can get that you know, aren't huge because, as you can imagine, when you bite into this pie, if you had a huge piece of mango in there, it would just you know, take a bite and it would slide <laughs> right over to the side. So we are going to cut little slices. So you just want to hold it with the claw and take your knife. I love using these um, kamachi knives because they're really light and they work really well with carving fruit. Now one thing about mangoes that I didn't realize because I'm not allergic to them so it never happened to me and it never happened to anybody around me, but they can be, the skin can be highly allergic. I had friends visiting the islands here and their daughter, she she uh, ate some mango and apparently it touched the skin or ate a little bit of the skin 
and broke out in a terrible rash. And, and the rash is the kind of rash that looks like poison ivy or poison oak. And it was pretty ugly looking. <laughs> I felt bad for her. And then not too long after that, I had cut a mango and I was like sucking the, you know, biting the meat off of the skin. And I, somebody came up to me and says, don't do that, don't do that. And um, I said, I always do. And they says, oh, it's so allergic. So be careful about that. I know it's tempting to get all that meat off the skin because this is like precious stuff. But you want, you want to be careful. I'm so slippery. Okay. Well, you got a couple of nice seeds here to play with. Excuse Finally me. found it. <laughs> okay, so good, honey. Let's wash my hair. It's really cool. Okay. Because we're ready for you to put another layer of bananas. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get it started for you. All right. Now, these bananas are a little firmer, which I think it might be a little bit better. The other ones were pretty, they were pretty, pretty gooey. They're pretty gooey. Now, I don't want to get mango all over this, so I'm going to let Landon do this because you want to keep the color. It'll be so much prettier if we have a nice color, a nice color to it. Well, there, my hands are clean now. Plus, he probably wants to play with this knife. You know me. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead, and you can go ahead and finish, okay. and then let's get a nice layer of, of bananas and kind of smush them down when you get done. Just take your hands and kind of knead them down. Okay. And then here's a whole new thing of mango that we're going to put on top. It's already cut. And I'm going to get going with the cream sauce. Whoa, doesn't this look great? Look at that. I swear it does, gets me excited. See that? Okay, honey, it looks like that. Awesome. Okay. Now the cream sauce is going to be pecans. I'm sure you can use your imagination here. You could use any nuts because you're going to see we're going to do a couple of things with nuts. I've got my Vitamix. We're going to take, these are soaked pecans. I've already drained them. That's why I put them out here to show you in the bowl because they were sitting in the fridge in a jar with some water covering, some nice cold water, but we went ahead and drained them. They've been soaked, so they're nice and soft and they'll blend really easily. And then we're going to take some dates. Now these are medjools. They're my favorite dates to use for any of the raw food desserts. They're so sweet and that's what we sweeten with. The medjools have been soaking for some time. You can see that they've all sort of fell apart. There's about five in here. Most of your medjools are never pitted. So we took the pits out and I just wanted to show them to you because I went ahead and did them. It's so much easier to take them out when they've been soaked because they're really soft. Let me put this over here. They're soft and you just pick them up in your hand and you kind of smush it and the seed the pit comes right out and you can throw it in another bowl. But we're going to start out with about five dates and the juice because that's going to give us a lot of sweetness. And let's see, then we're going to put in a little bit of vanilla. These are those wonderful extracts from Frontier Herbs. Their line is called Simply Organic. They have peppermint, lemon, vanilla. I'm just going to put a little bit. We don't want too much. Just like about a quarter teaspoon. What else are we going to put in there? Water. A little bit of spring water. Excuse me, Landon. How's it going? Pretty good. Great. It, the recipe calls for about six ounces, so I'm going to put almost a cup. I don't want too much water, so I'm going to wait and see if I want more. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to put in some coconut cream spread. I put both of these out to show you. Look at the, um, how you can see right through that. This is actually coconut oil. It's been manufactured in a way that's cold pressed. There's never been any heat on this coconut oil. And that's why it's clear. Because we're in a warm place, it's just going to melt like this and be clear. If it were very cold out, this would get hard and look like snow. And that's the way coconut oil works. It's a very, very stable oil. It's ex very, very good for you. And we're going to go into more of its properties when we cover oils and fats, which you'll definitely want to learn all about because it's, it's very interesting. And it has a lot to do with how these are manufactured. This is coconut spread. I call it coconut cream. This is the actual coconut itself, all ground up without any heat whatsoever, so it's really raw. And I'm going to show you how creamy it is. 
This is pure coconut cream. You're getting all the meat, all the fiber. And you can add like a, a tablespoon, a teaspoon in between there with a cup of water and you've got instant coconut milk. But we're going to go ahead and just put like about a tablespoon in here just for flavor. I put it in my smoothies. I put it on my toast. I eat it out of the spoon with some honey. I'll mix it with a little honey and a little bit of water and pour it over a fruit salad and sprinkle some nuts on top. You will love this product. And it comes from Wilderness Family Naturals. They have an excellent website and they have excellent products. They know more about coconut oil than any other company I've ever worked with. They know a lot and they have a, a fabulous product. Both of these are from them. But you'll see a lot of it coming on the market right now, but check in to see if it's been heated. Now, being that it's heated is not a bad thing because it has such a high heat point. However, if you want it raw, you just need to be aware of those little idiosyncrasies. So we're going to give this a whirl. And let's see, I don't know if I need my tamper or not. All right, let's taste it, Landon. Here, let me get a spoon. Get some fresh spoons, no double dipping. It, it might need more dates. The recipe calls for five to ten. Depends on the dates and sometimes how long they've been soaking. That's pretty sweet already. Think, yeah, it's okay. really good. Okay. I think we put about five or six. The mangoes are so ripe and sweet, it's mango season here. And so okay. we don't want to overshadow the natural flavors of the fruit. Isn't that sweet? I think it's perfect. Okay, next step, how are we doing? It's all pushed down, it's all ready. Okay, and these are nice around the sides, great. Awesome. Okay, so now we just pour the cream on. Not another layer of mango. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on you. Yeah, one more layer of mango. There awesome. we go. It smells so fresh. I wonder if you guys can hear the breeze there coming off the ocean. The last couple of days we've been shooting, it's been very, very um, warm here, and we haven't had much of a breeze, even though we were supposed to have a hurricane. But today the winds came up, and so we're all a little cooler here in the kitchen. It's nice. It's really nice. All right, we're just about there. I'm gonna a piece right over here. Yeah, and you can move them around. This is really fun for kids because they get to put their hands in the food, and kids love to play with dough and <laughs> <laughs> mine. And it's, um, it's really fun for them to be able to play with their hands with food and not get in trouble for it. Okay, we both need a towel. Here's one for you. All righty. Get a nice big spoon here. Sticky. Now I'm just going to pour this in around. In fact, Landon, why don't I give you this spoon? And I'll grab this coconut cream spoon. And you can start to kind of spread it. Be real careful. Now, because this is ooh so intense and so rich, you don't need a lot of a layer. You'll see it's just a nice thin layer. Okay, I'm gonna get more of this out. You can do this in a food processor too, as you can see. But we'll have lots of people that'll love to get the remains out of this. As a matter of fact, we could just leave it in for our next recipe because these little pecans will go really good in here with the next one I'm going to make you. There we go, a little bit more. And you could do it with macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts make the most delicious cream. So do pine nuts and we're going to show you that when we make the topping, the cheese for the raw food pizza. We're going to use mac nuts. You could use macadamia nuts for this. Pineapple. Also I've also done good. this same pie with walnuts. It's fabulous with walnuts. What about a little pineapple? Pineapple would be great too. You think that's pretty even? Pretty even, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to set this in the dehydrator for three hours only. And I think any temperature is fine. We're going to probably put it at about a 125 because it takes a while. See, the dehydrator, if you were to put the fruit in or anything that you put in this pie or whatever, and you put it on 145, the food itself will be 30 degrees cooler. It, it will take at least three hours for the food itself to get up to the temperature of what you've set the dehydrator. So if you want something to get kind of a jump start, you want to put it on a little bit higher and then maybe turn it down in three hours. But I think that what we're going to do is put this on higher because it's really going to only be at about 115. All right. 
So, Landon, now we just happened, you know, the, the privilege of making a film is that we already put one in here <laughs> earlier. And it has, and we're going to put this one in. And you can see how it's gotten all dark because it dehydrated a bit and it congealed together. There's a little bit of cream on this. And then we'll get that started. And then we can decorate this one in a few minutes. We're going to set it right up here, though, and do something else. Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and finish this, Landon, and then you can be doing it while I make the other dessert. Let's take, we're going to take these pecans that have not been soaked. These are nice and crispy. We're going to pour them in a bowl. We're going to add, we're going to take this and add a little honey to it. And then we're going to add just a dash of namashoyu, just a little dash to give it like, it won't even taste salty, but it'll just give this nice little flavor. What's in that measuring cup? Water. Oh. And I think that it'll be enough. This is raw honey from the big island of Hawaii. And what we want is a nice, sweet little sauce. Huh. Oh, the bananas, bananas fall falling over. And this is going to give, you know, I think this might be just a little too much. I'll put a little bit in there. A little bit more honey. Dash and I'm going to show you. And then we're going to sprinkle the pecans with it. Like I said, you can do the same with um, just a little bit. Same with walnuts. Okay, you want to just take your hands and, and go ahead and just kind of stir those up, toss them around. Okay. Yeah. And what we want to do is coat them so they get really shiny. And that honey makes a little glaze. And the namashoyu just gives it a teeny bit of color. Is there enough or do you need more? A little bit more. Okay. I don't want it to be too watery. Okay, this looks like a dried up riverbed. It didn't really get that dry. It just kind of split apart a little bit. Okay, honey, that's good, I think. Okay, here's a towel for you. Then I want to make sure they're all coated. And then you just start putting them all the way around the pie. Now you can see this first pie that we did, we didn't do the bananas high enough. But when the other pie comes out, we'll show you later and we'll show you the difference. You start putting those all the way around, okay? okay? And just you do an outside ring and another ring, another ring, and just make it really pretty. Or you can just make it whatever you want. So all is good. And then we'll refrigerate it for a couple hours. And then this entire crew is gonna be swarming around us, wanting this. And we'll, we'll put it on camera too when we cut it open. You'll see how everything sticks together really nice. Okay, I'm going to clean this all up, and then we're going to come back and make a cashew cream with berries. Okay, we're all tidied up, and now we're going to make the easiest one there is with some nuts. Okay, remember I said macadamias? These are macadamias. They make fabulous creams. Cream is just really blending it with some dates, even some water, some juice, some frozen berries, some frozen... Pineapple. pineapple. Ooh, that looks great. Speaking of pine pineapple, maybe we can put some noodle right there. Okay. Instead of just... Okay. Oh. Okay. We have some frozen in the fridge. Okay. So um, get the berries out too, would you? Okay. Them, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Frozen berries. This one's so easy. I'm just going to show you. We're going to do it with cashews. You do not need to soak them. You do not need to soak these either because they're not in a shell. They don't have that enzyme inhibitor. Remember we talked about earlier? If they were walnuts, I would want to soak them first. If they're going to taste a lot better. If they're pecans, they're best soaked too. But things like cashews, we're just going to dump all of these in. And we're going to take about the equal amount of dates. I hope I got all the pits out of this. We'll soon find out if we hear a loud noise. Lots of dates. Um, this one I'm going to use a little cinnamon. And I want to show you these. Simply Organic just came out with these small sizes of spices. And because a lot of times we'll just buy a spice and it'll sit in our cupboard forever and then it doesn't stay fresh. And you often want to buy spices like every six months or every year. And they've come out with these tiny little containers and then you don't have to get so much of it. A little bit at a time. So we're going to just sprinkle a little cinnamon in there. And I'm going to take a scoop of berries. Now, here's what I did with this. This is an orange that we juiced. Because for, for juice instead of water, I think it'd be really nice to put a little hint of orange juice. Another good thing to use is apple juice. And any tangerine juice, if you have frozen fruit juice concentrate, 
or even a little marmalade in your fridge, uh, a little of that, even though it might not be totally raw, it's a great way to sweeten. I'm going to put these in like a, just a handful of berries. It's going to give it a beautiful color. And I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'm going to wait on the juice because I'm going to see how much. We don't want this. We don't want it liquidy. We want it like a strong kind of tight pudding. Let me have this. Okay. This berry's got my hands pretty dirty here. Okay. Let's put the top on. Now you can see I didn't clean the Vitamixer because it's just got nuts and seeds and dates and all the same things. So we might as well blend them together. How about a banana split with that? What you do you mean think? instead of the glass? No, yeah. That's instead a great idea. Do we have another banana? Yeah. Okay. Right here. Okay, you can get the dish ready. Oh, that looks great. That looks awesome. great. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look, that's really beautiful. All right. I want to say something. I want to say something. You can do this in a blender at home. The reason that I think I discovered using juice is because a blender needs juice. A, a blender doesn't have the capacities as a Vitamixer. But I want you to know most blenders, you can do this. You just need to put more liquid in it. But the Vitamixer will have the ability where we don't have to use it. So we might just want to use it for flavor and for texture. Get a couple of pieces of pineapple and kind of chop them really small. Okay. Okay. I think we got this. Look at that. This is like ice cream, except 10 times richer because of these nuts. OK, what do you think? Yeah, it's really thick. You can taste those nuts in there, too, with the berries. It's pretty Very sweet. Very rich. I think it's sweet enough. Mm -hmm. OK, let's put these over here. Great. OK, and I think it's mixed enough. Now here's the fun part. This is so fun to do for a party, a dinner party, for dessert. Although I'll tell you, it's a pretty heavy dessert because you don't need to use many of the nuts because it's, it's rich. You know, imagine eating a whole handful of cashews. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these berries. If you have fresh berries, it's, it's really wonderful. And you might want to put a few at the bottom of the bowl. Fresh raspberries, fresh blueberries. You could put chopped pineapple. See that? Look, it's like a banana ice cream. I mean, a berry ice cream. And we're just going to float that in there and layer it. And maybe we'll take a little pineapple now. This might be even better in a champagne glass. OK, let me take those. Good. You want to use this knife, hon? That'd be yeah. better? Yeah. Thank you. Sprinkle those inside. Yeah, I think a little um, more shallow dish, like a champagne or a flute that's like this would be really great. But we're going to make a banana split, too. That's a lot. A little goes a long way on this, let me tell you. I'm going to set that in there. Put a berry on top. It's a great dessert. <laughs> Let's do the banana split. Sounds good. OK, you want to chop a little more pineapple? Yeah. OK, what do you think? We'll just lay it like this. We've got a lot of things going on here. <laughs> but that's what's fun about the kitchen. You know, you want to have fun. Just experiment and have fun and get your family involved. And if they get in the way, then don't get them involved. <laughs> but I think that, you know, we've lost with fast food and everything, we've really kind of lost the ritual of the table. And it's, if we want to be healthier in our lives now, we have to get involved in the kitchen. And maybe that's a great way for us to bond with our family and our friends. And it often gives some people something to do rather than just, you know, sitting around with nothing to do. And people love to, to work. You know, I worked at a home chef school for a couple of years. And the people would actually come in and just take classes for the evening and learn how to make one dish. And the people had such a good time. We would teach them how to take one particular recipe, and we all make it, and then I'll sit down together and have it. So it's a wonderful way to entertain. Let's sprinkle some of these on. If you had some organic chocolate chips, you could sprinkle those on, which we happen to have some. Where? 
<laughs> where they're um, in the other kitchen. Uh, we can get some of those and put it on. We'll sure. do that for our final good. picture. Yeah. And we can sprinkle some berries on top. What else would be good? We could even make a, a coconut cream and blend that up with a little bit of honey. Well, we try that. And pour that on top as a cream sauce. Let's put a fresh would be a little bit better. My hands are so dirty. Maybe a mac. And you've got a dairy-free banana split. Something like that, Landon? Yeah. Sounds good. That's fun. Can't, we all can't wait to eat this now. <laughs> all righty. Let's get this pie in the fridge. We'll wrap it. Um, I think we can actually just put something, just a couple of towels, I think, over the top, and we'll put that in the fridge for a couple hours, and then we'll really be able to enjoy it. Because it's still kind of warm. You know, it warmed up in the dehydrator, so we want to cool it down and let it congeal. All right? Okay. All righty. Here we're out on the patio here on the oceanfront in Maui, and we're going to have a great dessert. And it's going to be banana ice cream, and you're just going to love how easy this is. However, it does take a little bit of preparation, so I'm going to show you before we get started. But as soon as we get going with this juicer, this champion juicer, we're going to take the bananas and the fruit through it, and I'm going to start serving everybody up because it's one of those things that has to be done and eaten all in the same time. It's not like you can prepare this ahead of time because it just won't be quite as good. So I'm going to show you first our toppings. We've got some organic peanut butter chips, right Landon? Right. Yeah, peanut butter chips. And over there we have organic chocolate chips. We have some pecans and so we have some macadamia nuts. And we have here a pineapple, um, what we call it, a puree. Landon actually made this with Paul the other day and it's just um, blended pineapples with a little bit of marmalade and a little ginger, right? They think they're very cool. And the truth is they are. It's really delicious. Just a little bit of marmalade which gives this great citrus flavor. So those are the toppings and then this is the pie that we made, the raw food pie, which is mango, bananas and a pecan sorbet or pecan cream with dates in it. And you can see we've already dove into that because we all couldn't wait. <laughs> so all we had to do is peel your bananas, peel them and put them in the freezer. If you have really ripe bananas and you think, oh my gosh, I don't want to eat those bananas, just freeze them because they'll make the most amazing, incredible ice cream. Now who here has had banana ice cream? You have this kind? You have? All right. And we have here frozen pineapple. And Landon's been using his new Kamachi knives and he's been practicing on pineapples and he chopped all of this and froze it ahead of time for us. We've got a couple bottles of champagne from um, Organic Vintners. If you're having a brunch or a dessert extravaganza like this, champagne is a wonderful accompaniment. All right, we're going to turn this on. This is the champion juicer. And earlier, I think we, in one of the segments, we juiced with it. So it has a screen on the bottom but in this particular mode, it's got a flat plate on the bottom, so there's no screen. So the juice won't fall through, and so it's closed up, so whatever fruit we put in it or whatever food, it's just going to come right out this end, and you'll see. So I'm going to start with the bananas, and then Landon, as we start to get some out, enough out, we can start to serve it. Okay. And you want to make sure they're icy cold, and you serve it right away. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? No, wait. Just kidding. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I'm, I'm behaving. <laughs> I just put two on it, I can come over here. Now, these are island apple bananas. And we made some the other night. It was unbelievably sweet. I served um, this at a birthday party with a bunch of kids the other day. 
And really, quite frankly, no one could believe it was only bananas. No sugar added, no honey, no nothing, just bananas. Uh huh. It looks like, and it tastes like it. Where do you this taste it? And the other thing is, you can freeze anything. You can freeze strawberries. You can freeze melons, papayas, mangoes, absolutely anything. And your kids will have a blast with this. Look at that. Okay, Landon, you want to start scooping it up, or somebody? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Though I'm going to need another bowl. Oh, let's put it back into this bowl right here. Or no, I'll use this bowl. Here we go. All right. Now that's all the bananas we have. Normally we would have more, but they were so good with our smoothies. Nobody will admit it, but they got eaten. <laughs> here, honey, right here. You need that. Okay. Here, Paul, I'll hand that to you in case you need some help. Why don't you just pass it around? Yeah. Oh, he's got to have more. <laughs> here, pass it around, honey. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you definitely have to like bananas, but the point is, is it's creamy and what a great dessert. One you can't overeat. That's for sure. Mm. Now look at this. Look at this pineapple sorbet coming out of here. Look at that's beautiful. Whoa! <laughs> Tastes good. You know, I wanted to tell you too about these champagnes. This one, uh, this Cava Brut, this is from Spain. A beautiful champagne. This one here is grown with biodynamically, gr organically grown grapes. It's a little pricey, and I want to tell you it is well worth it. It's one of the most delicious champagnes I have ever had. All right, it's got a beautiful mousse on it. It's just wonderful. And we're going to all drink yeah. it later. <laughs> all right, That's so good. should we have more? Have you tried the, um, let me shut this off. Pineapple sauce on the banana. Paul, would you pass me a spoon? I'm going to, um, one of those big spoons. That would be good right here. And I'll uh, scoop up some pineapple. Do you all have pineapple yet? No. Nope. Okay. All right, Landon, you ready? Yep. Now, if you're a chef, you already know about what I'm going to say. Thank you. But when you change temperatures really on food, good. they change flavor. So That's these really pineapples, sweet. fresh pineapples, frozen pineapples, warm pineapple, it's all going to taste different. Same thing with bananas. So frozen fruit, when it's, it just tastes different, doesn't it, than just eating a banana? Mm. Yeah? And how about the pineapple? The pineapple is really good. Oh, the pineapple is like... Yeah. Really? Right oh, it's refreshing. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It's right on. It feels real clean, you know, that refreshing. No oh my gosh, that's good. Like that. Does just anybody want some pie? Or are you just yeah. too busy with ice cream now? <laughs> huh? Wow. A minute? Yeah? The pineapple is good. It is so good. Okay, let's cut a piece of that pie. A couple of back nuts. You want to pass it to me, Chan? I'm really lucky because I have my family here. This is my nephew Landon and my sister and her husband, and we're here at Paul Winter's home which he has so graciously donated for our entire shoot that we've been doing here. We're on the ocean. I don't know, many of you know Paul. He is the founder and creator of the Garden Burger and a fabulous chef, and he has been an amazing help to us all, not to mention a lot of fun. Good man, Paul. Thank you, sir. In that honor, you get the first piece of pie. Ditto to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I think I'm thinking pineapple meatless burger. Look at this. Oh, just careful. <laughs> Remember when we put this in the dehydrator? Pizza. We accidentally left it in a little too long. We left it in about an extra hour. So the bananas got a little dehydrated looking. When you make this pecan banana pie at home, make sure you don't leave it in the dehydrator too long. I mean, it's still going to taste really great, but it just will not quite look as pretty. Although this looks pretty good if you ask me. Okay, who else wants one? Think you can eat all this, Landon? Of course. This little kamachi knife is perfect for cutting pie. And now we set this up in the refrigerator after we took it out of the dehydrator, mm -hmm. and it's actually been sitting in there for about a day, I think. There we go. Now, you could even put some of the ice cream on top or 
Did anybody put chocolate chips on theirs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Cindy? Mm -hmm. This is so good. Um, pie? This. Would you like pie? Pie's awesome. She could eat it for every yeah. meal. Good. Would you say you could live on it? You live on it. <laughs> That's the way I used to feel, too. Well, I definitely think you should give this a try. I know you do need to have a champion juicer to make this the way we made it. However, it'd be a great investment if you're loving sweets, and you have, especially if you have a family. Now, I'll tell you, you could do it in a blender. What you're going to need to do, though, is add a little bit of, it's just going to have to have some liquid, maybe a little honey, uh, not honey, but a little juice, like tangerine juice, orange juice. Apple juice is a great uh, blend for any kind of sweetening that you're doing if you need an extra liquid. I've done it with tangerine juice, that's great. Mm. And also, you can throw in scoops of, big scoops of almond butter or anything like that because that will really make it rich too if you're, having to, if you're going to do it in the blender. You don't want to put almond butter through here, but you can definitely make something very similar in a blender. All right, have fun. All right, I'll it's our turn. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right, I think I'll make myself a plate. Mm. Mm. Good. This is really good. <laughs> that pineapple sorbet. You sound surprised, Jan. <laughs> Are you? I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh huh. Isn't that great? No uh huh. That was always just fruit and vegetables, never frozen. You could do this in the Vitamix too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Remember, we looked at the video, and you can just put whole fruit in there, and it'll just make a, a sorbet without even having to add any liquid whatsoever. You can even make a bread with the Vitamix too. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Essential Cuisine Kitchen. I'm Susan Campbell and welcome to our salad segment. You know, I was just looking over the um, brochure for Organic Vintners, the wine that we've been profiling in the series. And, you know, I wanted to point out to you that this is the most incredible brochure. I highly recommend you go to their website and get a copy of it because it has all the different countries that the wine comes from and a very thorough and clear but concise, you know, simple. <laughs> Uh, explanation of the different wines from Argentina, from Chile, from Spain, from California, all over the world. I'll tell you, just reading this brochure is like taking a trip around the world with wine. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a great brochure and it's beautiful and easy to read. I love that because wine can be quite complicated, as you know. But what we're going to do is we're going to open a wine here from Spain. It's a crisp, fruity wine. Um, it has a lot of Chardonnay in it. 
and uh, it's a convendrel, and because we're going to have salads tonight, so we want something kind of light and crisp, and we'll let you know what we think of it. Let's see, where's my can opener, or my wine opener? It's been so much fun here while we've been doing the series, because every evening we get to open a, a new bottle of wine, and in the morning we get to drink great coffee, and we have some wonderful uh, teas that sent, were sent to us from Frontier Herbs. Their teas are all organic and also some great varietals. The first salad we're going to make is one of my favorites, and it is fennel, grapefruit, onion, and avocado. And I wanted to introduce it to you because some people look at this and go, what do I do with that? Now we've got a couple people here on the crew that go, aha, fennel, and other people go, what is that? <laughs> so, and you know, I have to admit to you, there's many vegetables or root vegetables too that I've, I haven't worked with, and I'm learning. I, I try to take, you know, introduce myself to a new one at least once a month. Um, but we're going to cut this up and we're going to make a great salad of it, out of it. I want to show you how to take a grapefruit apart. These are ruby red grapefruits and you can see I already cut a purple onion here. But I, I cleaned all of the grapefruit and cut it up and I'm going to show you how to do it too. Isn't that beautiful? First of all, again, we want to create our flat surface. And we'll cut that in two and then we're going to, we have the fruit nice and firm. And we're just going to go all the way around like this. You want to try to keep, you know, don't, don't try to hurry because you really want to get as much fruit as you can. You don't want to waste it. But you want to get all the white pulp off. It took me a while to learn how to do this because it took a little bit of coordination. I don't mean this part, it's the next part coming up. Now then you got to go around and trim all these little pieces off. And I'll just keep trimming this and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to get the inside out. And you want to make sure your hands are really clean for this. You want to cut it over a bowl. I've already got some juice in here for the ones that I already cut up. Right in here. You're going to put this in your hand just like you're holding a baseball and you're going to cut right in between the uh, membrane here of the grapefruit. And you can do the same with an orange and you just pick it out right like that. I'm going to go ahead and drop it here into the dish and then I'm going to cut right there on the other side of the membrane and then I'm going to cut right down here and pick it up and just let it fall in. Cut right here. And you want to be very careful. These knives are sharp. I'm going to go ahead and just trim that little piece off. You know, if you get a little piece of the pulp in there, it's not the end of the world. It's just fine. No one will probably notice. But if you want it to look beautiful, you're going to want to take it off. Now look how thin I can get right through there through the membrane. But you have to have an excellent knife. Don't try to do this with a dull knife. I want to talk about knives a little bit more. Dull knives, more accidents happen with dull knives than sharp knives. Sharp knives are much more efficient. You don't have to put a lot of weight behind them. You most likely won't have accidents with them unless you're, you know, careless. I, I definitely have cut myself with a sharp knife. Now, when we teach home cooking, home chef classes, let's get right here on the side of the membrane. And see, this knife is just wonderful. It just, it just like slides right in there. 
um, in the home chef classes, we would never, we, we always had a dishwasher, and the dishwasher would use a dishwasher, and then wash a lot of the larger items by hand. But the knives, no one was ever allowed to wash a knife except the person using it. That was the rule. And if anyone used a knife while they, they were using a knife, they weren't allowed to just leave it laying around. They had to take it to the sink themselves and wash it themselves. And basically the way we would always wash our knives is by hand. And we would put them under, that's a little more, put them under the, the water, hold the knife by the handle, and take a little brush and just clean the bra blade with a little brush, not your hands. And then dry it. And be very, very careful with your dry, dry it, always with the blade away from the body. And put it away. That was the rule. <laughs> and it, it was great. It was great knife safety in a kitchen where a lot of people are using it. This one has a real thin one right in between the membrane there. Now you definitely, unless you're just so skilled, going to leave quite a bit of membrane. I'm going to have to go there on that one. Onto this nice middle of the grapefruit, and so I just squeeze it so we can get all this juice because this is going to be part of our dressing. We're going to make a grapefruit flax oil. You can do olive oil too, that's great. You could probably do a little sesame oil, that would be delicious, but you want to make sure you get a good, a good, um, you know, an excellent quality of sesame oil. Now I'm just going to cut these in half. They're beautiful when you serve them all whole like this, but you know what? I like to put things bite size. It's not all about beauty, it's about how to eat them. And you know, you can't put a huge piece of avocado and a huge piece of grapefruit all in your mouth at once. Some people <laughs> might be able to. Okay, we got a few seeds in here, not many. That one's pretty small. Now fennel is got a licorice flavor to it. It's excellent for digestion. They make a fennel oil um, with some of the essential oils that we're going to get into a little later. Those are actually oils that are made from all your herb plants and many flowers. But fennel is um, excellent for digestion, and we've been talking a lot about digestion, and that's another reason I wanted to introduce it to you. It has a yummy um, licorice flavor. I love to just chomp on it, just like it is. I'm going to put this in our bucket right here. Now, see how much juice? I have a lot of juice left. I'm going to go ahead and pour some oil into it, and then I'm going to put a little bit of that maple sugar. If you have regular raw sugar, that'd be fine, but the maple um, has just a little bit of extra flavor. And we'll mix it up, and what it's great with is avocado. Now, our, our avocados were a little bit on the ripe side, so I went ahead and put them around the dish like this, because if I were to cut them into chunks, they would have kind of gotten all mushy. And so, um, Otherwise, your avocados are best when they're still a little bit firm. And it's always a challenge to catch them right at the right time. We used a red onion. I, I think any onions are great with this. The Maui sweet onions are wonderful, but the red onions are good. So I'm going to put a little flax oil in here. Probably about a good spoonful like that. And... Like I said, olive oil is fabulous in this, but the next salad we're going to make, we're going to use olive oil. And I'm going to use a whole teaspoon of this sugar, this maple sugar. You know, a nice, a nice chunk of it. First time I learned to make this salad, and the person put sugar in it, I was shocked. But it really makes it good. Now I'm going to go ahead and taste it. I'm going to toss it in here, and then... We'll put it in here as soon as I get the fennel cut. So here's how we work with the fennel. I'm going to go ahead and cut the whole bottom bulb off, and that's the part of the fennel we're going to use. We already created a flat surface, and all we really have to do, so you can see this, is cut it like this. Again, I like the pieces to be slim, not great big chunks. But it's nice to make them kind of like the onion, like rings, but thin. Oh, you can smell this. It smells just like licorice. It just smells great. This is a very refreshing salad. If you wanted to, too, you could put a little garlic. 
And you can make about just any kind of dressing you wanted. Now, when you saw our dressing segment, you'll note that we, we those dressings were rich. And they call for pretty much of a pretty plain salad, you know, just really good mixture of baby greens. But when you have a dressing like this that's got a lot of different tastes and flavors all in it, you want a pretty basic stock dressing. Now these, these in the little, in the very middle, you might have some pieces you want to cut. See right there in the middle of it? We'll just cut those out. But I think it's just good to go. So put that in there. Take this one out. And we want to take some of these leaves. Now, I don't know if you saw our cultured vegetable segment, but these would have been great to put in the cultured vegetables. And you can put them into anything you're making, so don't throw them away. Go ahead and clean them off and, um, and save them for a while until you don't use them. There's lots of things you can put them in. You might just have a regular green salad and sprinkle them on that. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle them in here. I'm going to take the dressing now. You can put some more leaves. Mmm, this is going to be great. I wish you could smell it. I, I get this nose of this red onion and then the grapefruit and then the fennel. Mmm. I think what I'm going to do is when I put it into the, the dish that we're serving it here, then I'm going to take some more of these and put that on top. And I'll make a beautiful presentation. so pretty. This is a great warm climate salad. Not exactly what we're experiencing here, but we're going to love it because we've got lots of good, good yummies tonight for dinner. And it's still raining. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pour this on the top. So we want all that good juice. So there you go, you've got your fennel leaf on the top to give it its identity. Enjoy a beautiful wine with this. This will complement any meal. Now that's beautiful and it's delicious. <laughs> Now most everybody knows how to make fruit salad. It's pretty simple. You just chop up a bunch of fruit and put it in together. But I just wanted to show you another way to use the coconut cream concentrate with some maple syrup to make a wonderful sauce to put on the fruit salad. So I've chopped up some bananas and some apples and some pineapples here. We're going to put some berries on it. We're also going to put some walnuts and maybe sprinkle some flax seeds. And I wanted to show you a little bit about flax seeds too. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I've already chopped everything, with the exception of the strawberries, is to go ahead and make up the sauce. I'm going to use the coconut cream concentrate. This is, you know, they call this coconut spread. One of the other companies calls it uh, coconut cream concentrate. Um, I call it coconut cream. But it's the same thing. It's basically the same thing. Okay. So often when you're, when you're working with this concentrate or this spread, you're going to add water to it to actually give it, um, to make it into a milk or, or more of a cream sauce because it's very intense. As you can see, I took out about this much, which is quite a bit. This is like three tablespoons at least. And I'm going to add some hot water to it. Otherwise, you could have set this in a, in a pan of hot water and let, let it soften up. You can also do that. And I've got some hot water going over here, and I'm just going to add a little bit to it. 
And then we're just going to stir it up and add some maple syrup. Now, you could probably add like eight ounces of water to this and make a, a nice milk. Um, but we, we don't want a milk. We want it thicker. So I'm just going to let this kind of sit in here while I kind of smush it together. And it'll slowly soften. That's why it's great to, when you put it on hot toast. to um, It'll just melt right, right on it. You know, another thing you might think of is if you live in a cold climate yourself, you might want to um, leave this out. And incidentally, you do not need to refrigerate this. You do not need to refrigerate at all, um, this or the oil, because it's very shelf stable. You just want to make sure that you don't get any other food in it. But if you refrigerate it, you're always going to be fighting with it <laughs> because it's going to be hard. So if you do refrigerate it or if you live in a cold climate, kind of think ahead of time. Now look how thick this got. See, nice and thick sauce. So that's what I mean. I could add an, another whole cup of water to this and I'd still have a delicious beverage. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to add some maple syrup to it. I'm going to make it like almost half and half. You see that? And of course I have to taste it make sure I have the right ratio. I made this and put it on a fruit salad a few times and taking it, another thing I take to somebody's house for like potluck, <laughs> it's another big hit because it's a new taste for everyone and, that, and that's what's really fun. People love trying something new. We all love something delicious, but something new and delicious is even more fun. Oh my gosh. You really must try this. It is the, first of all, the coconut cream is, is so rich that you almost want to pick up those chunks and eat them, which you can. So that's good for the sauce, and I think that'll be plenty. Now, I wanted to show you something else. Um, Flax seeds. We talked about flax oil quite a bit, and I wanted to show you these flax seeds. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but if you want to get omega-3s, your flax seeds, we know, are one of your best vegetarian sources. The, you can um, buy them already ground up. You can buy them like this. Or you can buy them already ground up. These are the way they come um, with Barleen's Forta Flax. And you can see those are already ground up and ready to eat. If you eat them this way, chances are you're not going to really digest and get the benefit from the oil because when you just eat the whole seed it needs it's it'll just go right through you just unless you're really so good at chewing every single one of them up which is not what usually happens let me turn this off so you're going to uh, you're going to want to get them f uh, ground and this is an excellent source because these are vacuum packed and kept very fresh or you're you can grind them yourself and we have a little grinder here just to show you how this works. There's flax seeds inside of it. And you take the top off, if you can get it off, yes. <laughs> there you go, and you turn it upside down, and you simply just turn it like this. And then you'll have fresh flax, fresh ground flax. If you're not, if you're not enjoying this seed, you should, because it's great for you, and it tastes great. It's a great addition to any dishes, particularly a wonderful fruit salad. I'm going to take my bamboo um, prongs here, salad mixers, and mix this fruit salad all up. And the reason I'm mixing it now before I put the berries and the walnuts on top is because I want it to look pretty. Hmm. Like I was mentioning earlier, I wish we had some oranges. That would be very good in here. All right, that looks great. So I'm going to cut up some berries. And I'm going to go, these are kind of ripe, so we're, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them all up. And then we're going to chop some walnuts. And then I'll pour the sauce on top. And we'll enjoy it. Now, if you just have one particular fruit, and you just want to make a display over that, I mean, use your creativity. You can pour the sauce over any fruit in it, it'll be great.
You know, one thing I don't know that I would really like it on is melons. I think it goes better with these kind of fruits, particularly bananas. Are these bananas stuck together? Okay, let's put some walnuts on it. And I think we'll sprinkle some flaxseed too. Remember, walnuts are very high in omega-3s. You know, if you get maple syrup, you want to make sure that you, you buy organic maple syrup and maple syrup like this. The, the flavor of this organic maple syrup, when you get pure maple syrup, is so much different than anything that has been highly processed. It's, you'll, you'll have something that's very sweet, but you won't have that real maple flavor. And that's, I mean, I can still taste that. That's what made me think of saying it to you because the combination of this coconut and the maple is absolutely delicious. And if you live somewhere, too, where you have local bee farmers and you can get honey, fresh honey from your own area, that's a wonderful food because it's from your local bees and it's usually very tasty and a lot of different flavors in the honey. And use that honey because it's full of enzymes. And even though it's a sugar, and if, even if you're sugar sensitive, usually you can tolerate a little bit of honey because it's so full of enzymes that it's actually a very highly powerful food. So I'm going to go ahead and put the... Move this and put the sauce on. Then I'll sprinkle the berries on top and a little bit of flaxseed and we'll be ready to go. Probably want to toss it before you, you go ahead and serve it. But I think that what happens is when you serve it with either tongs, or actually that would be better to serve this with a couple of spoons so that people can get the sauce off the bottom. Now this bowl, along with some other bowls that we're going to be using, was made by Paula Gill. And it's quite extraordinary. I don't know if you saw the inside of it very well, but there's some beautiful bowls. We happen to be very lucky to have these wonderful potters that have loaned us their dishes so that we can profile them in the series. I love using them because it's just powerful when you know the people that have made your dishes. And they've put their love and energy and creativity into making these beautiful beautiful things that we can put our food in and nourish ourselves with. So not our, the nourishment just comes from so many different levels. And I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to take just a little bit of flaxseed. Oh, this one shows a little bit more. And sprinkle it right on the top. And there we go. Beautiful fruit salad. You know what? This is a pretty hearty meal, too, when you have this coconut in there because it's so rich and um, quite yummy and very fulfilling. Enjoy. You might recall earlier when I used some buckwheat. Remember when we made that delicious breakfast in the olive oil segment with the buckwheat, soaked buckwheat groats for that um, yummy breakfast cereal? Well, I just wanted to show you the versatility of buckwheat because it's incredible. You can use it for so many different things. And we're just going to make an afternoon salad out of it. I have already have it soaked. We've already rinsed it. It's right here. And I'm going to put just whatever we kind of have left. You know, we've been shooting for a couple of days. We have some avocado left. We've got some wonderful herbs, some cilantro and some parsley. I've got some basil here. I had a couple pieces of the leek left. So I'm just going to chop up some tomato and put it in. And I like to, to make things bite size, if you'll recall. None of that big stuff. <laughs> we already have some Cucumber, that's been all chopped up already ahead of time, and that's all bite size. You know, I actually didn't discover using this buckwheat um, until a couple of months ago for a salad. I don't know why, I just didn't ever thought about it. And then one afternoon I was in the mood for, you know, some herby kind of tasting things. I think I had some fresh cilantro and I wondered what to use it for. 
and I had I think some chickpeas or, or lentils left over and so I decided it would be a great afternoon salad and actually it turned out to be great so that's why I wanted to share it with you I think this is probably enough tomato And again, I really highly recommend that you keep these fresh herbs on hand all the time. If you can have a vegetable garden or an herb garden, then all the better because you can just go out and pick them fresh and whatever you might be in the mood for. So there's the tomato. And we're going to go ahead and put these leeks in. Let's see. And the cucumber. Now on the dressing for this, you're going to watch and see how simple this is. And I just want you to encourage you that you can throw all these different kinds of herbs and vegetables together. And that way, you know, it's not like a big mystery about how to make them. You just chop them up and put them all together and you create a nice sauce for them. I'm gonna, this is cilantro and a little bit of parsley and some fresh basil. Let's see, what else do we want? Oh, the buckwheat. All right, you don't want to overpower it with the buckwheat. I'm just going to take a few spoonfuls here. Maybe one more. There we go. We've got quite a bit of vegetables, so we'll just stir all this in. Now look at that buckwheat through there. This, this yields a much higher protein of a, of a salad instead of just a bunch of vegetables. It'll be a lot more filling and therefore it'll stay with you longer, which is good. Okay, so I think how we're gonna dress it is I'm just gonna pour some olive oil on it. You know me, I like a lot. And a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Just do what you're in the mood for. Apple cider vinegar is very good too. But when I use apple cider vinegar, then I like a little bit more sweetness to it. Because I like all those different flavors. And I am going to take a little bit of this maple sugar and just sprinkle a little bit of that on top. Just a hint for a little bit more sweetness. Let's see. I think we can fit it into this dish. These are these beautiful bamboo bowls from Totally Bamboo. Mmm. There we go. Okay, and our finishing touches. A little bit of the mineral mixture. All the sea vegetables ground up. This is a great combination to enjoy these sea vegetables. I'm going to put them all in the middle so they don't cover it up. And then, what meal would be complete without flour the ocean sea salt? And tons of it. There you go. You have another great salad. And use any combination of any vegetables that you want. Bon appetit.